Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of A Valley Without Wind. In the last part, I defeated the last evil lieutenant, and spent the rest of the part trying to get to the evil overlord's castle, mainly due to the increased difficulty and my survivor dying before I could reduce the difficulty to area enough. As right now, the area is plus 3 in my current level, so enemies are more damaging and they take a lot more punishment before falling. Immediately after entering the castle, I get faced off with this gauntlet of bosses. Well, two of them. It isn't too bad, but the main problem is with this aquatic esper, or whatever its name is, and the sea worms. Specifically, the sea worms and the aquatic esper's projectiles. The sea worm does it, it takes a lot of punishment before dying at this level, so that makes it even more annoying, especially how it can speed up and grow in size. But essentially, we have the same uh, layout of the castle. Like in the previous castle of Continent 1, we have to go visit and uh, visit the switch location so we can open up the staircases. And just like before, the switches are on the left side of the castle and the staircases are generally to the right. I'm not sure if this will, the pattern will stay the same, but it seems to be holding from my previous run throughs. Before I actually started this LP, I went up to and completed continent number 3, and it seems like the general pattern of the switches being on the left and the stairwells being on the right seems to hold. Anyway, fighting this clockwork bee was quite a pain. As you may have noticed, I took a ton of damage from her electrical shocks. So yeah, I strongly su don't suggest going at plus 3 level, especially at the Overlord Castles or any of the tougher areas. Not unless you get, unlock the, spiel, uh, the shield spell gem, or you're very specifically geared towards that. Maybe even use lower tiered spell gems so that I can use them more constantly, even though your DPS may be affected. After all, survival is key in this. Thankfully the difficulty isn't so much that the, if you die a lot, the ghosts won't be too much of a problem. And also, if you feel that you, you kind of messed up your the progression in this region, mainly by dying a lot and causing a lot of vengeful spirits to spawn, don't worry, just go back to your settlement and lower the difficulty. So, uh, lower the combat difficulty to as low as you want, preferably the lowest, defeat those enemies, and then teleport back to your settlement, and raise the difficulty back to where you think it should be. Although you really should be, be more careful, uh, lower the difficulty of the region, or upgrade your equipment. Anyways, I have to try kiting this uh, giant uh, sea worm around. It is annoying, but it works. Thankfully, they're generally weak against my um, entropy-based weapons, specifically a um, clinging factor, so at least it locks on. It could have been much worse and have to be some sort of spell gem element that I had to aim. And yeah, the urban balloons are also quite annoying. So around this point I decided uh, I don't want to deal with this plus 3 segment before uh, continuing on from here because I thought I was going to die to the Overlord, although that that thought wasn't really the case. It was more the case of the enemies. So I decided to ra race back to my settlement and upgrade one of my stone binders, a Willet Mech, so that he would have enough uh, happiness and his skill would be enough to take down the evil lieutenant Overlord's levels. Which it did work, but unfortunately he died only after the raising or lowering the level by one. But that was enough to make the enemies much more easy to deal with. Also, in between, I did some dungeon delving in order to get the necess necessary materials and conscious shards in order to afford all this stuff. After all, it can get quite pricey to buy all those books, as you saw already. Here is a similar segment of enemies that I faced at the beginning of this uh, castle although I didn't have the urban balloon, but just look at how much faster it goes. Much less of a nuisance, much less of a danger. At this level, I you should really only max out at level 2, in terms of plus level 2 of how far you want to go, unless you're really skilled or you can avoid most of the foes. But, of course, as you know already, you can't, you can't pass through boss arenas or bo boss uh, areas without the killing off the boss. It'll it'll completely prevent you unless you use one of those escape scrolls. But of course the escape scrolls will take you out to the world map and won't allow you to progress further. So yeah. And yeah, I'll be exploring much further in terms of level uh, gauntlets and the survival area when I explore the caves in the future continent. If you keep going low enough, the 
The levels of the enemies will keep increasing slowly and slowly, becoming more and more of a pain to deal with. But like I said, I'll deal with that when I actually get a shield and chat. Or when I unlock the world of Magi characters and the shield spell gems. And the shield spell gems combined with the world of Magi get quite broken at times. But it's a long ways away. But yeah, this uh, this follow the general steps as before, unlock the switches, and you should be fine. I'll get back to you just before I reach the boss. Wow, 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 wow,
Alright, I'm near the boss gates. Before I enter them, time to decrease the scaling of the minimap on the lower right part of the screen, as it obstructs quite a bit of the my viewing range, and I really don't want to have that much obstructed viewing range when fighting against the overlord of all things, especially when it's at plus two of my current level. Right now I'm going as, in as Constantine Missilan at level 10. Just showing off my stats, and I'll be entering soon enough. I always do this just before you face against the boss. Make sure to set up all your enchants, spell gems, escape if you really want to restore your health, and then go into the fray. And my fears against this boss were mostly unfounded. The enemies are much more of a hazard. Anyways, that giant beast right up there once they take care of this urban mech. And I actually get it close enough. Here it is, the evil overlord, specifically the Skelebot overlord RG6-U971. It's the one that's ruling over the second continent and causing all this tyranny, so it's time to take it down. Its weakness is earth-based spell gems, specifically has a 30% weakness against it, so I'll be using a ivy whip and forest rage especially a lot against it. It also has a 10% weakness against Entropy and Water, but because I have the Forest Rage, I'll almost exclusively be using that. And it's resistant against air-based attacks, specifically 75%, so I'll be avoid using like things like Bolt Lightning. Thankfully, he, unlike most other enemies, it doesn't do contact damage, thankfully, otherwise I would assume it'd be almost instant death. And just like any other Overlord, it's 20 feet tall and humongous. Its series of attacks, as you may notice, is when it it can release an omnidirectional fireball, it, uh, which can uh, which slowly follows you, but it is quite hard to dodge. Another another one is which is when it releases all these living f seeker flames, which, which slowly follow you around, but you can destroy them. Another one which it'll show soon enough, if if it decides to cooperate. Well, it can also fire the, the series of flamethrowers, slowly. It's easier to dodge than the spread shown here, but it does more damage. And here are the seeker, uh, here are the seeker flames. Uh, unlike the fire living flames here, you can't destroy them, unfortunately. And if you get hit by them, it does a, it, it does a flame damage over, over time effect to you. And the last most dangerous attack, well, the one I feared, and thankfully I didn't get hit by, if he if it cooperates and shows it soon enough, it's kind of random. Uh, yeah, it do, it will do it eventually. But essentially, if I were to explain it now, it probably won't do it soon enough. It wasn't really being cooperative. 
essentially it'll fire a it'll fire a huge a spread of huge fireballs upwards and if you get hit by it it does a massive amount of damage I didn't get hit by it but I've seen other players get hit by it and boy it, it takes a, a huge chunk of health off especially if you're not if you don't have enough shield in, or damage mitigation in chance but if you stay on the upper part of the screen it, they they'll usually hit the hard part of the of the obstacles so they'll they won't do any damage and you don't need to worry about them it's when you're on the lower part of the screen where you really need to worry about getting hit by it so at, when he releases all the seeker flames and living flames just escape to the top part of the screen and use your fo follow weapons or we spell gems that lock onto the target as well as the, your spell gems like forest rage after all forest rage does not get destroyed upon impact of these floors unlike ivy whip in fact it'll act somewhat like ball lightning where it'll it'll sail across the floor or slide across the floor and it has a higher chance of hitting it that way so rinse and repeat, keep going across the room counterclockwise, avoid all the seeker flames, living flames, and those giant fireballs, and you should be fine. And remember, no contact damage with it, so if you're feeling really risky, you can use things like the Ivy Whip to, to speed up the fight because of its higher DPS. So rinse and repeat, keep dodging, attacking. Oh, there was a, there was a huge burst. Getting hit by that is almost assuredly instant death as I've seen from other players. Unless of course you have enough damage mitigation or shields. But yeah, but usually if you stay around the top it's not too much of a problem. It's only if you stand directly on the top where yeah getting shotgun by it is just like the Deep Woods Gargan shotgun. Yeah. So rinse and repeat those ideas, avoid the attacks and you should be fine. Be right back at the end of this boss. And there we have it, the evil Skelebot Overlord RG6-U971 has been slain. The second continent is free from its tyranny. Well, of course now the survivors have to worry about all the monsters that are still remnant. There's no way of removing them, unfortunately. Another nice thing is that this boss has dropped quite a nice set of enchants. M more so than the first uh, evil overlord that I beat. The main, uh, the main advantage I got here was some, well, was some trade-offs in terms of mana regen, but the main buffs I got here were, well, mana regen, and especially haste rating. What haste rating does is it affects how fast you can use your spell gems. As you'll see soon enough, I can use my Ivy Whip and launch Icebox spell a lot faster after this. Or notice, noticeably faster. Please note that it combined you doing this also, even though it, it decreases your cooldown, it also means you spend a lot more mana faster. So you you might want to pair that with increased mana regen, or better mana slot uh, upgrades, or mana slot end chance, so you don't run out of mana right in the heat of combat. This is especially good against the uh, weapons that fire have high DPS; they get affected by it the most or weapons that require a long cooldown before each attack. Anyways, before closing down this part, it's time to go see what happened in this continent over the few last few parts. We lost five glyph bearers. Peyton Cobb, Simona Madruga, Xenia Zara, Jolice Christmas, Amberley Quick, and we lost two survivors. Avondre Womble, Evandre Womble, the adventurer, and Willet Mech, the stonebinder, in this part. We lost these seven souls in the progress of the continent. In fact, just one in this part, one in the last part. But in the process, we were able to free this continent. And the order in which we destroyed the evil lieutenants and overlords are as follows. First Bald Pear fell, then Rita the Sickness, then J. Triviste, then Narukami, then, of course, the evil overlord RG6-U971. This continent is now free, and now we can move on to the third continent. Well then, this was definitely a step up in difficulty compared to the first continent, as evidenced by all these deaths compared to the previous continent's one death. So yeah, and the next continent is going to get even harder, especially as I up a city building difficulty. 
But anyways, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Doodles!